Hello and welcome to our second lesson on HTML elements and tags. Today we're going to look at how to format our, format our font. In the past it was quite drab and dreary, the same old font. So now we're going to format the font to make it slightly more interesting. We're going to look at some tags that can help us do that. And the first tag that we're going to look at is the font tag. So over here you'll see the tags similar to what we've done previously. It has the angle brackets and it has a, a, both an opening uh, tag and a closing tag. And remember that the closing tag will have this forward slash in front of it. You can now also go and add attributes to the font tags. So you can change the font color, for instance. Just note the spelling there. It's the American spelling, C-O-L-O-R. And then you'll use the equal sign and you can type in the color that you would like to change your font to. You can also use codes for this. You can also change the font face, that's the font type. In this case, I change it to Arial. You can change it to anything that's installed on your computer. You can change the font size. Now, just be aware here that you're not typing in the font size like in Word and Excel um, 10, 12, 14. You're just adding, making it plus 2, making it um, bigger by 2, or, like in this case, de de reducing the size using minus 2. And you can string all of these together to um, change your font. You don't have to do them individually on different lines. Okay, right. Uh, we're going to look at the, um, what that looks like in a minute. It's important to also now note that your HTML page has a specific structure. So you'll see that you should always start with HTML. We spoke about this in the previous lesson. And it ends with HTML. And whatever's in between these two tags defines what's on your web page. Then you've got your heading section. And whatever you put in here displays the title in the title bar of the browser. And just underneath that, you've got your content that's going to be displayed. So your body will be quite large because that's where you're going to add everything into your web page. It's important to keep a proper structure, otherwise everything's going to go to pieces later on. Okay, we're going to look at that in a minute. Uh, we're also now going to look at some color attributes. Um, so you can also go and you can change the background color of your web page, for instance. So the entire background, you can change to a color that's going to work for you. It's obviously important here to look at something like a color wheel um, to make sure that the colors contrast properly and that it doesn't irritate the eye when you're looking at it. As I'm quite sure the red and the gray at the moment might be irritating your eyes. Okay, you can also change the uh, text that you're going to use in the body of your web page. And for instance, here I've changed it to yellow so it stands out nicely so you can see it on screen. Right, you can also add links in your web pages. So you, you're not going to just have a static web page that's boring. You would also like to add information in there that makes it interesting for people to visit your web page. You can add links to pictures or other websites or to your own website to different pages on your website. So for instance, in this link, I've added uh, the Mindset Network um, web page. And if people were to click on Mindset Network website, they'll actually go to that website. So this tag starts with an A, there's a space, and then href. So that's the reference. Where's the hyperlink going to point me to? And in this case, it's going to point me to httpmindset.co.za. So you'll need to know the URL of the link that you're putting in. Okay, and also remember, just note here, that this kind of tag has a closing tag right at the end that you'll need to put in. You can add images to your page. Thank heavens. Can you imagine how it would look without any pictures? Um, that's what we use the internet for anyways. We want to see images. We want to find movie clips, that kind of thing. And at a basic level, you can start by adding some images to your web page. And to do this, you're going to use the following tag. You're going to use IMG, which is short for image, SRC, which is your source. And then you're going to tell the computer where you have saved your picture. So you must have the picture on your local computer and then you're going to put in the path to find that particular picture and then insert it into your HTML code. You can also add attributes to these pictures. So here we've got our picture but we're also going to align our picture to the left of our web page. You can obviously align it to the center or right or whatever works for you. 
You can change the height of your picture. So you can change the settings of the picture, the height and the width, for instance. And then there's also an attribute H space and V space. And this will add some open space around your picture. It's just to isolate your picture so there's no text that overlaps over it so it doesn't, that it doesn't look cluttered on your screen. Right, so that's your H space and your V space. And then, of course, you can add a border to your, web, uh, to your picture as well. It's always, it always rounds it off a bit. Always a good idea to try and do something like that. Okay. Now we're moving on to lists. And don't worry if you're a bit confused at the moment. In a few minutes, we'll quickly look at some HTML code and you'll see how it all fits together. Right, in HTML, there's two, kind of, two kinds of lists. You've got your unordered list and your ordered list. So let's start with the unordered lists. This is your bulleted list, okay? And you'll see the tag is UL for unordered and it has a closing tag, forward slash UL. Within these tags, you will need to add your list items. That's an LI in the tag. And for instance, here, we're going to have a bullet, and next to it, we're going to have the word teach. And then the second bullet will have the word learn next to it. So this is your unordered list. Then we also have our numbered or ordered list. So now, instead of just having a bullet, you can have numbers or letters. That actually puts it all in the correct order. And instead of the UL, we now have the OL for audit list, and we also need to close that tag again. The middle section looks exactly the same as your unordered list. You're just going to insert your list items, like teach and learn, and you can add as many as you want to. Right, okay, we can also add attributes to our list tags. So, for instance, for our unordered list, we can add the type disk, or square or circle and that's what the actual bullet will look like so you can either have a little circle or a little square or a little disc right so just take note of that with your audit list you can also let me just go to audit or unaudit list rather you can also add some attributes and here you've got some codes that you'll have to work with so type equals if it's a capital a it means that your um, Numbers will be a capital A, B, C, D. If it's a small a, it will be small letters A, B, C, D. If it's a 1, it will be numbered. This is a capital I, by the way. I know it looks like a 1, but it's a capital I. And this will insert Roman numerals instead of the traditional 1, 2, 3, or A, B, C. And then your lowercase i will also insert Roman numerals, but now it will be lowercase. Okay, note how this is in the opening tag of your ordered list, and the same with the unordered list. You add these attributes in the opening tag, and then you'll have your list items in between the opening and the closing tags. Right, let's quickly have a look at some of the examples. So I'm going to go to my Notepad++ program now. Okay, we spoke about the HTML, we spoke about the head and the title before. Here's my body section where I've now gone and I've changed some font. So I've changed the font color to purple for this sentence, and I'll display it in a minute so you can see what it looks like. Here I've changed the font face, so the type of font I've changed to Arial. Here I've increased and decreased the font size, and then here I've put them all together in one sentence or in one tag to actually apply different settings at the same time. Right, so I'm quickly going to run this, and I'm going to run this through uh, Chrome. So let's launch this in Chrome. And this is what your web page will look like. Right, so there's your, this, this sentence is purple, okay? This sentence is displayed, you, displayed using Arial font type. Font size plus two, font size minus two. And you can see what a big difference that plus two and minus two can make to the font size on your screen. And then here's the last sentence where I combined a couple of the attributes in one sentence. Okay, let's also quickly have a look at the other one here. Okay, here we've gone and we've added the usual HTML, the head, the title that you should be aware of at this point. But in the body, we've added attributes to change the background color, for instance. So here we've changed the, changed the background color to gray. And note the spelling of gray there, please. And I also specified that the text 
on my actual web page, everything that's going to be typed on my text should be yellow. Okay. Then we've added a hyperlink, the ahref um, uh, link over here. And I've typed in the URL. So when people click on these words, Mindset Network Website, it's going to take them to the Mindset Network website. Just below that, or to the side, I've added an image of the logo of Mindset Network. And if I scroll across the screen, I've added all those attributes that we spoke about earlier. I've aligned the picture, I've changed the height and the width, the um, eight horizontal space and the vertical space around the picture, and I've added a border to the picture as well. Just note here, the color of the border will depend on the color of the text that you specified in the body uh, tag over here. So that border is going to be yellow as well. Right, then we did lists. So we add an unordered list. So that's a bulleted list. And I added two here, um, teach and learn. And I added an attribute. So I said to the computer, listen, I want the bullets, but I want it to be displayed as a square. Right, then I have an ordered list. So here we'll have some numbering. I also added an attribute, capital I. So the computer will insert capital Roman numerals in this case. Okay, let's quickly run this one. Let's launch this in Chrome. Okay, there we go. There's our picture. Okay, with our yellow border. And then over here is where we have our hyperlink that's going to take us to the Mindset Network uh, page. I'll do that in a minute. Here's our unordered list, the two bullets, and you can see, I'm just going to zoom in so you can see a bit here. Right, so here's our website, and now it's displayed in our browser in Google Chrome. You can see the picture over here. I've zoomed in, so that's why it doesn't look that great. So I just zoomed in so you can see properly. But here's our picture with the border that we've added. Here's our unordered list, our bulleted list, and here's our ordered list with our uh, Roman numerals. And then right here at the top is the hyperlink that we inserted, which was the ahref tag that we used. And you'll see if I move my cursor over it, it turns, the pointer turns into a little hand. That means this is a hyperlink. And if I were to click on it, it will direct us to a, a different website. In this case, the Mindset Network website. Um, on this note, we should also just have a look at the structure of your final product. We've spoken about the HTML structure and within Notepad++ you should have a specific structure. But then when you start creating your web pages, uh, they should be structured. If people find your web page difficult to navigate or the information's on top of each other, they're not going to stay there very long. Uh, the web, World Wide Web has lots of web pages and they will find something that will work for them. So if we quickly have a look at this website, everything is straightforward. We've got the navigation here at the top. There's only three links. And then there's some more links underneath that. They've got their logo on the side, cl clear and simple. Um, it doesn't take any guessing work to figure out where to go if you're looking for information here. Then if you scroll down further, there's additional information that you might be interested in. And some pages even have a little footer section at the bottom where, that you can also use for navigation. And then also remember to think of your target audience when you're creating your website. Not only should the website be easy to navigate, but you should think about who's going to come and visit your web page or who you want to come and visit your web page. If it's for younger people, you're going to try and keep your colors vibrant and interesting. Um, if it's a more formal website, maybe for the government, you're going to keep things in a formal tone. You're not going to add wacky fonts and all kinds of funny stuff. Right, that concludes our lesson on HTML tags and elements.